Well, hi there, my name's Shane. Welcome to the channel. And in today's video, we'll be taking a look at pressure testing this David Brown 990. We had a pressure test rig set up here and we'll plug it into the camel's hump over here on the tractor to test the pressure. So come on over here with me and we'll get started on that. Okay, so this is the camel's hump right here. This is the piece that connects the hydraulic pump on into the hydraulic uh, valve chest and hydraulic pressure comes up through the center here and goes down that way. I've already loosened this. I had to take this over to my local Napa Auto Parts store and I had them take a look at it and fashion me a hydraulic test rig that would fit this. This is apparently three quarter straight thread, uh, standard thread, or maybe fine, whatever. Uh, the guy at the the parts counter at the Napa Auto Parts store here local to me was really helpful and made me up a test kit, a uh, test rig. Just like this. We have a 3000 PSI pressure gauge, some hydraulic hose they had laying around the shop. They made me a hose here. They got a swivel fitting on here for this. This is number eight JIC, to, uh, number eight JIC fittings to three quarter number eight JIC to three quarter straight thread. So what I'll do is I'll thread this onto the camel's hump here, just like so. If I don't drop it, got the drop seats today. So this will fit right on here. Just like so, I'll tighten it up. And then I'll fit this onto here. I did replace all three of these O-rings. They are dash 113. Inside diameter is 9 16 outside diameter is 3 quarters, and cross section is 3 30 seconds on those. All right, to pressure test this thing, just like I kind of, uh, just like I talked about a few minutes ago, pressure comes up from the pump through this middle tube. Pressure goes up through this camel's hump into this tube that goes into the valve chest. In order to test the pressure, you have to blank off this tube. Now that presented a bit of a problem for me. How am I going to blank off that tube? I, don't, I didn't find any directions or any kind of specifications or anything like that online. All I saw in the service manual was the part, really, that shows the blanking plug going in, but there's no dimensions associated with it. So I measured it and Went to around to various hardware stores looking for something to use. I didn't want to you know, turn down a piece of wood, right? I've got a hardwood dowel here I had in my house. I didn't want to turn that down to make a plug just because I don't trust wood. So I'm like, what can I use? I'd like to use a piece of soft metal just in case I need to turn it down just a little bit, sand it down to make it fit in the hole. And I got to thinking about it and I was taking a shower. And as one does, when you're taking a shower, you have a bright idea. I've got brass in my house, spent casings, 38 Special Winchester, fits like a glove down in that hole, fits like a glove. I mean, look at this. I mean, it's, one, it's about two thousandths off from my measurements. It's about two thousandths less than the width of that hole. Slides in there perfectly. So I got to thinking about it a little bit more and I'm like, I don't like the rim of this cartridge being, you know, it's not that big of a rim. So what I did was I took a circlip or a snap ring and put it in there. There's a little groove right up there next to the rim on this bullet casing. And then I put a little O-ring right beside it. So I've got the rim of the bullet, a snap ring or circlip, whatever you call those things, and an O-ring to kind of give some support because I didn't want the pressure, you know, pushing down on the top of this bullet and deforming it and pushing it on down in the hole. So we're gonna try this out and see what happens. I like how this fits. 
absolutely spot on in terms of dimensions for the hole. And I've got enough spread out around it at the top to try to keep it from going down in there. And maybe the O-ring will seal it. So pressure will be coming up through this port right here and coming down and pushing against the top, the bullet casing. This is gonna be fun. Yeah, I was just like thinking, where am I gonna find some brass of the right dimensions? And I had some in a drawer in my house. All right, so let's get this thing situated. I've already put the three quarter straight thread up to the number eight JIC fitting there. I think that's what's that, what that's called. If I'm wrong, correct me in the comments. I'm not a fittings expert by any means. But let me find the bolts to put that in and we'll get this party started. I get them too tight, but tight enough. Those bolt heads are 9 sixteenths. This fitting is 7 eighths. And we'll make sure that's tight. It does have an O-ring in around the threads at the top. So I have the blanking plug in and we're threading on now this part for the pressure testing apparatus. Let's go through the checklist. Four bolts are on, they're tight. Plug is in on the rear pipe. Union is on, attached to the hydraulic hose and the pressure gauge. All right, let's get you around there so you can see what happens when I turn this thing on. All right, throttle is down where it will be an idle. We're out of gear. We're ready to test this thing. And contact. I think we're good to go. Pressure looks fine. We're over 2,000 PSI. Good deal. I think the pressure is going to be just fine. If you guys remember in the previous video, which I'll link to up in the corner, where I resealed the hydraulic pump, my pump was out of spec for what, this, what it's supposed to be, but I just resealed it anyway. And that was the test right there. Apparently you can be out of spec just a little bit and everything should work okay, at least for a little while. Thanks to Earky, Erky, however you say that name, again, for saving me the cost of buying a hydraulic pump when all it really needed was to be resealed. Let's not forget to take the bullet out. Right. Thing I have found is once you've tightened this thing down, it's kind of difficult to get it up. Just a couple of light taps with a soft faced hammer will free it up. Like so. And finally, let's make sure, let's see if our bullet got stuck. No, it did not. <laughs> this worked like a, charm, like a charm. Oh my gosh, this was awesome. Look at this, the bullet worked. 38 special for the win. I think a 38 special casing 
from what I looked up online, is just under 0 0.380. And that O-ring did the trick though of sealing up that, of sealing the, up against that snap ring, circle, whatever the heck you call, call that thing. That is awesome, folks. 38 Special Bullet, bullet casing will seal up that hole on my tractor. Your mileage may vary. All right, reassembly. It was on just like it came off. Do you really want to see me put four bolts in? Or can I just cut to the uh, end part here? I didn't find a particular torque spec for these bolts, so if somebody knows what those should be, leave it in the comments below. But I tightened them pretty tight. All right, now for the top plug. This has a crush washer or something on it. Keeps it sealed. Yes, I am using a breaker bar here to get this thing tight. I have had a leak here at one point. I need to replace that crush washer or something. Many years ago, I did have a leak right here. But not since I put my back into it and tightened it. All right, let's fire up this tractor and see if we got a leak here anywhere. Out of gear. Let's see if there's any leaks. Nothing around the back. Nothing on the side. No leaks around the top. All right, I think we're good to go on pressure testing of the tractor. Everything looks to be A-OK -okay in terms of pressure. For this resealed pump down here, I am over the moon in terms of how much pressure it generated. I did not expect it to get anywhere near what it got. So I'm very happy with that. So like and subscribe if you like what I've been doing here with these videos. It helps the channel out tremendously and I really appreciate it. If you've got any comments, leave them below. I like reading your comments. Any kind of things I did wrong in the video, please correct me. I like giving, getting feedback from you guys on things that I could have addressed differently or have in, are in need of changing. I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate you following through this restoration of the hydraulics on this tractor. We've got a few more things I want to cover, not necessarily the hydraulics. This pretty much puts a bow on the hydraulic series. But thank you for watching, and y'all have a great day.